you're going to then initiate or call upon what is known as 5B. Occurring simultaneously, this is the slow block to polyspermy. Slow block to polyspermy. What is the slow block? The slow block to polyspermy occurs via something known as the cortical reaction. So we'll talk about something known as the cortical reaction in this side of the flow chart. So now, what is the slow block? The slow block is when we have the following. The sperm and egg, once you have sperm meet egg, sperm plus egg, you're going to have all this occurring, but you're also going to have another thing occurring simultaneously. This starts what is known as, we'll just say, a different, something different than the fast block, signal transduction pathway. So it's going to cause a different signal transduction. And remember, a signal transduction pathway is just a pathway of steps that's going to cause an internal reaction based off of an external environmental stimulus or cue. So what's this signal transduction that's going to happen? On the inside of the egg, you're going to have, as a result of sperm meeting egg, as a result of plasmogamy, a different set of ions also start reacting, start involving themselves, and these are calcium ions. Calcium ions are going to be released from where they're stored, and that is the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum of the egg, to the cytoplasm. So now the cytoplasm, in addition to being influxed by the sodium ions that are rushing in from the outside, the calcium ions will also be released into the cytoplasm and mix with these sodium ions. So now you're getting very, very pol depolar, right? This is a positive ion as well. But these calcium ions aren't really involved or are not mainly or primarily supposed to be involved in depolarization. They actually cause something else. They actually cause a cortical reaction. Calcium ions released from ER to cytoplasm. Once that happens, this is a step, the next step would be the triggering. This causes and triggers what are known as cortical cortical granules cortical granules formation cortical granules will begin to form once calcium ions are within the cytoplasm this is shown and we'll put this on the side in figure 47.4 the formation of these cortical granules and the calcium release that we see okay big deal what are cortical granules what are they good for how are they going to be involved they're going to be the main components of the cortical reaction so these cortical granules they're vesicles Okay, they're granules. They contain stuff within them. These vesicles go to the egg cortex, thus the name cortical granules. They go to the egg cortex, and the egg cortex is just a layer, a sort of a covering that's right beneath the plasma membrane. So right beneath the plasma membrane. And so now, once these vesicles go to this cortex of the egg, cortex just means outer portion, so it's very close to the very outside of the plasma membrane, you're going to have the following event. You're going to have the releasing of their contents. The vesicles release contents. They release whatever within them because they're a vesicle, they're a granule that contains something. They release the contents and these contents will include things like enzymes and different uh, other different macromolecules. We'll see what specifically is released a little bit later. So once you release these contents, what's the purpose? The purpose is to create a block to polyspermy. Just like this created a transient block, these contents will create a more permanent block. This is going to be the following. These contents are going to be released and they fill up, essentially this filling up, they block the space between, the space between, and if we remember the structure of a sperm, uh, of an egg within a sea urchin, we notice that there's going to be a vitellin layer, that thin layer, and also the plasma membrane is going to be right after the thin layer. So in between, you have this cortex. Imagine the plus sign is the cortex. And in this cortex, you're going to have this filling up of these materials that are going to block the space that's between the vitellin layer and the plasma membrane. Overall, this is just termed as the cortical reaction. This is going to cause the cortical reaction. Once you release these contents, you're creating the cortical reaction. You're promoting it. What is the cortical reaction? The cortical reaction, broadly speaking, is going to have the following events. The vitellin layer hardens because these contents are released. The vitellin layer changes its structure. It hardens. It produces something called a fertilization envelope. Fert envelope. 
So that's something to remember. A fertilization envelope forms. What's the purpose? It prevents sperm entry. The fertilization envelope prevents sperm entry. Let me rewrite this. Prevents sperm entry. Why is that? Well, this is a hardened layer. The sperm cannot digest through this hardened layer because it's full of these enzymes and macromolecules that are causing a fertilization envelope, an impen impenetrable fertilization envelope to form as a result of the cortical reaction. And then also, not only that, this is going to cause the cortical granules themselves, cortical granule that has stuff within it. Remember those enzymes that are within the cortical granule right over here? Those contents were released. Those enzymes are going to actually degrade, go and degrade. They're going to break down all of the egg's membrane receptors. Why would you destroy structures of this very important egg? Well, that's because you don't want any more receptor recognition between sperm and egg. Why is that? You already got that over here. And I just realized I just spelled this wrong. This is plasmogamy. You already got this over here. You already got the recognition that you needed. Check. Done. Don't do any more recognition. Degrade everything that is involved in recognition. Break down those receptors. Create this fertilization envelope. Block any other sperm from possibly entering this egg because you've already done it. And what you want to notice, and what I think is beautiful about this fast block and slow block combination, I've ran out of space here. I'm just going to continue it here. You can sort of write underneath this, right over here, the following. So we'll put a star over here. What you can write underneath this is that all of this is going to create a complete block. This creates a complete block, a full block. And this is an irreversible and permanent state of this egg cell now. It's irreversible slash permanent. It will always be there and it will stay there because you've done the necessary events. And what I think is quite poetic about this, it's the fact that this all takes one minute. It takes one minute, approximately, let's say, one minute to set up. Because if you notice, there was a lot of steps involved in this. Look at all these arrows. Look at all these steps of releasing contents and making contents, etc. This takes one minute. So what do you do for that one minute? How do you prevent polyspermy? Ding, 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 right over here. Look what lasts one minute. Quite convenient that the fast block lasts the enough time for the slow block to completely set itself up, to completely create an irreversible and permanent block to polyspermy. And that concludes our look at the, at the sea urchin fertilization. Hopefully from this you can see that it's a multifaceted approach to make sure and prevent that polyspermy and ensure intraspecific fertilization of one sperm and one egg. That's the goal. That's the goal that's been reached after you look at this. Make sure you take a look at figure 47.3 to really drive home visually what has just occurred in these four to five steps.